in a row here this weekend that Mundo will be banned against Denial. Four for four, nobody in the Challenger Series or Challenger Playoffs wants to dance uh, to play Mundo. It's that simple. Yep. Considering uh, the, the power of that comfort pick and seeing how well Pabunia did actually play yesterday, it's not surprising. The one thing I do want to highlight, Rise is still up and available, and that was also a champion that Pabunia really impressed us with. It did a lot of work against Cloud9 and was largely responsible for uh, their Game 2 victory. So we see actual first pick coming in here, Nidalee. Final ban, by the way, for a reason, was LeBlanc. That'd be against uh, Nick, but they've locked in that Nidalee straight away here, not messing around. And of course, it was Nidalee that caused them the problems yesterday against Cloud9 Eclipse. In fact, the two games that they lost were against the Nidalee. Interestingly, Nidalee has been first picked on blue side not on red side. So this is something that we're seeing from uh, a trend from the Challenger teams, is that preference to get that Nidalee. It is, it's a safe lane. You, know, you yeah. have a heal, you're very mobile once you hit six. And as we talked about yesterday, there's always a point in the game where a Nidalee Sphere is going to decimate your HP bar. It is just a matter of time. And thanks to the fact that you can heal and that it's quite difficult to lock her down, you're almost safe in knowing we'll get to that point eventually. So Reason Gaming here taking Lucian Leona. Now, we can draw some very real comparisons to yesterday because every single game they banned Morgana. Uh, Cloud9 Eclipse banned Morgana against Denial and took Leona every single game. This time, Morgana's available. They've taken Leona. Will we see that here for Denial? It's, it's a definite option for Denial. The real question is, what do they want to do with the rest of their composition? If you do go for the likes of a Morgana, I may even theorize you, you might want to stick a Caitlyn in there. Caitlyn versus Lucian is not necessarily a terrible matchup. Yes, the Morgana into Leona is a slightly more uh, difficult to play if you're the Morgana, but both, uh, both champions have the option to counter the other. What we've seen, especially in the North American scene, is Leonas can beat Morganas by uh, taking advantage of the Black Shield. Gump up. Once you know the target with the Black Shield, you just flash and stun the alternative person in the lane and go for the kills that way. So there are tools to work with. But, as I was going to say, Denial, they need to decide what they want. We've seen a Kale support from Super A's yesterday. I was not particularly impressed by it. But on the same token, Denial, Kikis were just completely destroyed by Ku, so he never got a chance to really scale into it. He didn't get, they didn't get a chance to do much, did they, in no. game number one. That was a very one-sided affair. Rai is going to be picked up here, though, for Baboonie. We talked about that, that he actually, in the game that they won against Cloud9 Eclipse, played Rai's game number two. Ended up 5-3-11, had a strong game on that one. His Jarvan pick later on didn't work in that series. I'm happy to see him on Rise here today. There's already a emerging problem that I don't like from Denial. Uh, they're going to take time to get to a power spike. You know, it, you, Nidalee needs to get ability power before Javelins are going to hurt. Rise needs 20 to 30 minutes before his tier and his Rod of Ages are completed and stacked up. If Denial do not have a strong laning phase, they can get bullied and pushed around the map. They cannot afford to make mistakes. And when you look at Reason locking in Elise as that very early gank heavy jungler that can disrupt those slower laners, there's a lot of pressure and onus on Denial to make sure they don't fall behind in the early stages of this game. So we are going to see Elise here in the jungle for Reason and Irelia. Now Irelia played in the last three games actually uh, by Reason's top lane of Beansu. Both games against Ninjas in Pajamas and in their quarter-final third game matchup against Mouse Sports. Now, he starts with that Irelia. I've not been impressed. At all. I don't want to say not impressive. He's not had masses of kills, not had masses of assists. Like 1-2-3, 0-1-0, 2-2-3. Two, two, been very low score in matches for him. So it's a comfort pick for Binzu. And I want to talk about the matchup. If we go to Super Week in the LCS, Wicked actually played Irelia into a rise, which is the matchup we're going to be seeing here. He built damage. He went a very aggressive Irelia build, and he dumpstered Rise. In one-on-ones, both with teleports and you know the split pushing the lane, Irelia was winning that matchup. Wicked was ecstatic after the game because, well, it's Irelia, and he was winning his lane. And I think if Beanzu can put himself in a similar position and get aggressive and control Rise for the opening 20 to 30 minutes of the game, that's another positive way that Reason can. Uh, take charge and grab reins of this first match in the third place final. So Denial, final two picks here, adding a lot of mobility in with those final two picks as well. Siva, the AD carry, and taking Vi for the jungle. So Vi is, this is the first time we're going to be seeing it this weekend. Uh, clear, strong initiation. I like the fact that you've got a lot of mobility here. You've got movement speed increases from, you've got movement on every single member of Denial. So they have tools to deal with recent gaming and team fights. When a solar flare comes down, 
you can pop on the hunt and you can spread away from it as much as you can. You can maybe pounce out of the range. The trick for Denial is to make sure they pick the right targets when they jump into these team fights. If Denial overcommits by throwing Vi in deep and Kale can't get in range for intervention or Nidalee's hanging out on the side trying to throw spears, Reason do have some tools to displace them and deal with them. There's a lot of hard CC and a lot of damage on Reason's composition. And speaking of Reason's composition there, for the final pick, Oriana was chosen here for St. Cooks in that mid lane. I would dare say that Reason have gone with a, a slightly more standard type of composition, that bruisery, tanky top laner that's a little bit more attack damage based with a lot of AP from your jungle and your mid lane. Over on the side of Denial, they've got a lot of their uh, magic damage from their solo laners, both top and middle. And I think what I like about Reason is they also have a lot of tools to both engage and disengage. Shockwave can be used aggressively and defensively, as can Solar Flare. But what I do like about Reason is their champions have a shorter fuse before they can get explosive. And if they can take adva advantage of that uh, earlier power plateau, they can really get in Denial's face and deny that early scaling or that scaling that we're expecting from Nidalee from Rise, etc. With that though, you've always got to bear in mind that if they implode in the early game and end up giving some kills here, then that is complete bad news for them. If you look back to their games yesterday, they just weren't really present in them. Game one obviously was the, the perfect game for ninjas in pajamas. Didn't lose a kill, tower, dragon, nothing. There was nothing in that game for a reason. Based off of yesterday's performances, you have to think that Denial would be a little more confident coming into today. They put up a good fight. It was scrappy, you know, for the for their second and third victories. And they were at least on par of with power with Cloud9. Reason Gaming, on the other hand, you'd have to think the expectations are low. They really got destroyed and now they need to bounce back from that and deal with it. So here we go then. In-game, it's Denial versus Reason Gaming. And the first match of what could be an epic best of five. The prize certainly is epic. One of these teams will be going to the summer promotion tournament and a possible spot in the LCS waiting for them. Still a lot of work to be done before they get to that stage, though. And actually, Denial, we saw this from them yesterday, actually. They like to make a bit of a move at level one. Yeah, so Denial in two of their three games would go for this tri, tri uh, bush invade. They've got all of their members stacked up against three members of Reason, but there's full vision, so Reason should be able to get out cleanly. There's no hard CC outside of a rune prison, so, you know, if if Beans, uh, uh, Babunia rather had skilled up his rune prison, like he has, they've caught Chrysland, and that's very low. That is good damage. Chrysland actually not flashing from that one. There were flashes available, but you have to think with Chrysland having flash and summon a heal available for him there, he would have survived. So there was two things. On the side of Denial, there are no Ignite Summoner spells. You have a double heal lane from Woolite and from Super Rays, and you've got Intervention, and Kale's got a heal as well. So this is going to be a super let's never die lane. And if you ever see Woolite and Super Rays dying in these laning phases, They've been severely outplayed, they've been caught out of position. On the other side of the coin, we are seeing our first exhaust of the Challenger playoffs as well. And just keep in mind that the exhaust uh, has been reworked on 4.5. It reduces more damage, but doesn't necessarily reduce as many uh, auto attacks as well. Yeah, I think actually yesterday Barney D did run that one against Ninjas in Pajamas. In fact, I think both supports were running exhaust yesterday. Uh, we have seen Super A's when he played Kale yesterday was also running Flash Heal. Yeah. Right now, Reason Gaming actually pushing back here against Denial and moving in towards that blue buff. Denial have backed away from this one, and I'm not sure that they were spotted coming into this one at all. Either way, we are going to be seeing lane swaps coming around. In fact, both duos looking like they're going top side. So we'll see how this lane swap works out. Yesterday, Super Ace played the Kale into Leona against Cloud9. And part of the reason I was not particularly impressed by it is Voidal had a lot of very good engages. At level 3 and level 4, Voidal was jumping into Super Ace's face and making his life very, very difficult. So we'll see how Barney D handles himself. You obviously assume that until Barney D gets some levels, he's going to be playing more defensively and Chrysalin should be losing some CS. Just about those junglers, it ends up being a blue buff swap. Uh, teleport was used by Beanzu though, as well as Babunia to get to that bottom lane. Get in there, and that will leave us with a duo on the top side of the map. Siva Kale versus Leona and Lucian. And right now, we can see the Denial pushing this lane up pretty heavily already here at the start, getting some early damage off on towards Barney D. Yeah, so, you know, Lucian is pretty good at pushing lanes, uh, you know, in the early stages of the game. But when you have Kale with the Righteous Fury as well as that Siva, 
it gives you a lot of lane control when you want to play that aggressively. The one thing that Denial need to be a little bit wary of is that they are dealing with a jungle Elise. Yes, Elise has had uh, some of her numbers tweaked and dropped in recent weeks, but at the end of the day, she still has a cocoon, she still has a, uh, a hard stun, and if Leona gets it as well, there is a lot of damage that can come down. Yeah, going on towards Warlight there, actually, it's Super A's that's trying to put the damage back here onto Reason. To be honest, not really losing much HP whatsoever there is Warlight who took the brunt of all the damage that was dealt. Just to keep an eye on the jungle, Elisa's moved away from this top side of the map, so Trashy trying to get some early farm going on this one. Yeah, working his way up in levels, I wonder the decision making, if Trashy's feeling a bit more confident going into the rise lane. We've seen it yesterday as well, that the rise lanes tended to be ganked a little more often by the challenger teams, and you can theorize it's just to reduce the time that uh, he's CSing and try to delay his power spike. We tend to see Ryze's hit like uh, activation, so to speak, around that 22 to 25 minute mark when the tier's fully stacked and they've got a Rod of Ages that's close to, if not completed. Well, the CS in that solo lane down bottom is pretty bang even right now. Beanzu having that big wave pushed up under his turret. Not really having any problems with that blade surge. It's Baboonie going to be forced to flash here. He just caught sight of Trashy down the back. There is a Repel coming in. Have they got the damage? Cocoon going to come out there, lock him up. And that's first blood going over to Reason. After the, watching that introduction video where Denial were talking about how Trashy, if he performs, Reason will win. And if Trashy doesn't perform, Reason will not win. That is a great gank. They did have to burn the flash for Trashy, but he threaded the needle through the Cocoon just past the minion wave. Not only did they grab themselves first, blood it went to the top lane of beans which is great and all of this golden experience has been denied to rise keep in mind though that kickus is now a, le a little bit ahead in experience to trashy so that assault and battery from his uh, ultimate will be there soon they spotted that Trashy was actually coming towards this mid lane and Nick just going to step away there. Does get hit by the spinal lane. Now Woolite taking a lot of damage up in this top lane as well. Leona having a good time of landing these Zenith blades up until now. Woolite needs to be a little bit wary of this one. This is exactly what happened yesterday. Woolite and Super A's going uh, Kale support versus Leona. They were playing on the back foot for a large portion of that laning phase thanks to well-timed engages by uh, both Leona players, Voidal yesterday and so far Barney D today. Because of the fact that Woolite is on less than half hit points, he cannot afford to play aggressively. The moment Barney D steps forward, you'll notice Woolite instantly backs away. If he gets caught by another Zenith Blade and stun, there is two heals that need to get burned through, but there is the threat of him getting taken out. So keep your eyes on those summoner heal baits, which uh, Denial might be trying to play for. Interesting seeing him holding on to that spell shield to, uh, you know, not block out Crystal and knowing that he's probably going to have to save that for if Barney D actually goes diving straight in on top of him there. The CS between the two AD carries is pretty even considering the amount of damage that's been put down here by reason, 43 to 39 CS, and there's a big wave pushing on towards Denial here, so that will actually bring him straight back even and maybe even put him in the lead if he manages to land all those. If we look down the bottom here as well, we see that Ryze has now got his tier completed with the boots in there as well. Double Doran's Blade and Doran's Shield, so the three Doran's items start for Beanzu. So we talked about how if Irelia does go an aggressive item build, uh, damage, etc., you can actually deal with the Ryze in those early stages up until the point Ryze starts getting like super tank levels. I like seeing that double, uh, double Doran's Blade and Shield if Beanzu can keep getting some kills and keep getting lane dominance. He needs to take advantage of this very early pass fight and not go down. Go, I'm gonna take down Beanzu and that's Kiki's coming in there and to be honest, both of these teams had a lot to say about each other's jungles. There's Barney D actually quite deep in this one. They're gonna go on towards Warlight. There is one summoner heal gonna be used. Have they got the damage to force them away? Crystal actually down to half HP from this one. The boomerang's gonna do a lot of damage, but Warlight's still fairly low, and there's still a heal, heal there for Crystal. So one heal on each side. We'll see how they make that work. Kickers is gonna go in on Senkux in the mid lane. Yeah, I'm not sure he's gonna get in there though. That's the danger. Actually, we will see the shockwave use on towards Kickers, but he needs to be be very careful here. Nick gonna go diving in. Here comes Trashy Cocoon, not quite got the range. Kick is now trying to escape and will escape from that one. Already got out of range and they're just gonna push straight down this mid lane. They've got quite a lot of minions with them. Yeah, and they'll be able to get a lot of damage on this mid turret. It does look like the Nick wants to get in range to at least CS. Smart call by reason to back away. I wanna go all the way back to the kill on the bottom lane. 
as Vincent is going aggressive with Bunya. He is going very aggressive. Actually going to dive into him there through the ultimate his way as well. And despite that kill that Babunia picked up there, Binzu coming straight back into it and saying 1v1, I can still have you. Yeah, the problem is, every time Binzu does that, he go he burns through his mana pool. The Cocoon doesn't connect, and this is a risky dive. Are they going to dive it? No, they're not. Without the Cocoon there, still far too risky with Ryze having, uh, Ryze having that ability to lock you up underneath the tower. And then you will see the first blue buff's going to be gifted over. Eight and a half minutes in, first one of the game there for Nick. Trashy going to start his off. That will, of course, go over to Segments as well. Very active uh, ganking parts for both of these junglers in those solo lanes. If either team had managed to secure kills like... Uh, at these later stages, these later minutes of the game, it may open up some parting towards the dragon. But the one thing that, you know, Denial really want to do is they need to match blow for blow. If they give up a kill, they have to try and find a, a counter kill. If Denial give up a tower, they have to find a counter tower. Because the moment Denial start falling behind, that's when their champion composition is really going to struggle. On the flip side, knowing that you've got that Nidalee poke, knowing that you're going to have that guaranteed engage from Vi in conjunction with at some point, guaranteed damage from Nidalee, you know, a spear will land. You then have a very nice mid-game strategy, but Binsu is taking so much poke from Babunia. Oh, well, that's dead. <laughs> Kristen finishing off that one there in the top. Barney D once again locking him up. They hit six and pretty much went all in on that one. We see the solar flare on cooldown. Binsu actually falling low again in this solar lane. And Babunia, whilst he's got good damage on there, I don't think he's quite got enough to finish him off. Not just yet. And remember, he doesn't, he's not running that summoner ignite. So the kill threat is not quite yet. Now the diving super ace. The diving super ace, who's only level five. There's a flashback from him. Will he get away from Crystal, who's going to have a dash up here in a second? Is there a heal available for Super Ace? Chrisland decides not to chase in, and he's gonna survive it, but they may lose the tower. Small misplay by Chrisland to not actually get the last auto attack and secure the kill. I think at the end of the day, getting all of this damage on the tower, we do see Siva moving into range to defend as best as she can. But advantage to Reason Gaming, they should take this tower down. They do. And now we need to see, do they rotate around the map? You tend to see that tower falling and then moving the dual lane. Binzu may go down, Assault and Battery's available. Ah, but Babunia's got no mana left here, but there is the Assault and Battery coming in. Is the finisher gonna come down? Kick is taking too much damage. Babunia will flash around. Binzu managing to get some health back, and Babunia has to back away to the tribush. Oriana is coming down. Babunia's gonna play the recall game here and hope that he can get away before Oriana gets in there. I think he's got enough time to get away from that. He does. Cooks does come around but it's just too late. And just like that, misplaying the top lane, not landing all of your abilities together. And unfortunately, Babunia, because he burned so much mana in the trades earlier on, trying to control Binsu in the lane, he didn't have enough mana to work with the gank from Kikis. To be fair, they were running for a couple of seconds longer as well. They were trying to get in range for that assault and battery. Kikis had to flash just to get in range. It was not ideal. And at the end of the day, Binsu, you have to think a little bit lucky to get away with his life there, as well as that great positional play with his blade surge underneath the tower. Well, look or not, it looks like Reason are going to try and turn this into a dragon pickup. As Nick just waiting off to the side here, the spear's going to be thrown through, the culling will come out from Woolite as well, and there is the dragon pickup. It's going to be Trashy that smites that one away. First one of the game going over to Reason, gives them quite a considerable gold lead here at 11.45. Even without uh, the, the kill in the bottom lane, because they secured the tower up top, Reason had rotated the dual lane towards the bottom half of the map, and that immediately just gave them a numbers advantage. They had a positional play as well. Even though Denial knew it was coming, they did not respond quickly enough, so they couldn't challenge and they couldn't contest. Reason with a very strong start to this game, I do want to say it was somewhat expected. When you look at the champion compositions, you do feel that Reason Gaming have champions that can make plays a little more often. But you have to give props to Denial. I think Kikas has had two pretty good ganks against Beans, who's really in that bottom lane. And I don't think Denial uh, can afford to fall further behind. The moment they do, Rise and uh, uh, Rise and Vi should be able to burn through Irelia or Elise when they jump into fights. Now it's Nick just getting pushed on. Actually, Beans are going to come in. There's a flash away. Kick is actually using the assault and battery there onto Beans underneath the tower. But look at the damage that Kick is has taken from that one. He's going to have to Vault Breaker straight back out of there off to the Wraiths. And that may just leave this turret under pressure now. Three men coming in for Reason Gaming. Nick starts to back away. He's pretty low on mana. Kikis is pretty low on health. They have to be careful. Yeah, at this point in time, because there is some 
AoE from that Vi as well as the Cougar from, from Nick. I think if he goes in range, if a Cocoon lands, that's it. There is kill threat. They pulled Babunia down from that top lane. He was only on his inner turret. But as you've highlighted, Nick has got no mana to throw javelins. He's just trying to poke them down. Unfortunately, not connecting. And wave off the wave. As long as Reason uh, brave it out, they should be able to get this tower on the next wave. Let's see what Babunia can do to stop that one. He's got the Catalyst now finished off with his tier. And the second mana crystal as well. So another spear comes flashing through, but again, you see Babuni having to use his ultimate here to finish off that creep wave as fast as possible to deny some free time onto the turret. There again, Nick just jumping forward, and again, we'll lose out on that trade. We can see down the bottom as well, Super is struggling here, having to heal constantly on himself. Yeah, I think Nick is missing a lot of those uh, abilities, and Super is in trouble. Yeah, this is mega trouble for them. He got just behind the turret there. We saw the solar flare maybe a little bit too late into that one, but either way, they're going to get a tower from this one, and Denial know it. They're going to back away from that mid lane, and that will be the second of the game for a reason. It's not, it's not over. Just they're going on towards Crystal. He's not got no mana from this one. Barney D trying to finish off Super Ace. Well, that actually will go in on towards Barney D from this one, but to be honest, neither team really healthy enough to commit fully. Yeah, not not only are they not healthy enough, there wasn't enough mana pools for either Crystal or Wulai to actually go for those engages. So what we've seen from Reason is they continue to persist even if they are at a little bit of a disadvantage. They hung around in that middle lane through four or five minion waves to force the tower down. The moment that tower drops, Trashy immediately rolls down to this bottom lane. He's backing up his AD carry and support. They wanted to apply pressure to the tower, but you'll notice they don't have a lot of vision of missing champions of denial. So the moment they calculate, Vi is missing, she's probably going to assault and battery up. We don't want to run the risk of her jumping into us. They back away, play it safe, heal up, buy their items, and I'm expecting them to siege that bottom tower again again. Tower well, down again. It's two towers here, which is two more towers than they got in the first game of yesterday's semi-final best of three against Ninjas in Pajamas, that perfect game. And well, we could we could say that about the kills as well. Two more of them and one more dragon. So overall, things are looking up for Reason. They are. And I have to admit that for Reason in game two, yesterday against NIP, they did look better. They had yeah. some plays that uh, you actually felt like they were competing. You know, in game one, they really just got outclassed. Now, I do feel that Reason Gaming have got a nice advantage now, but they cannot afford to let it sit. They need to continue pressuring it, get more towers, and more importantly, get some deep vision. They have got champions that can make very good plays if you know what's up. And right now, they're jumping on Woolite. That is the call in coming through. Barney D getting the, uh, the slow there from Super. He doesn't do any damage to Barney D whatsoever, to be honest. And now we see that Nick is coming around. Chrislin. Almost in range from that one. Senkux has come in, and this is a natural progression, really, for a reason. The final outer turret left on the map. Yeah, because all oh, Wula takes a big chunk of damage. The champions that Reason Gaming have makes it very difficult to engage upon. As long as they don't get poked down too much, say, for example, Vi throws herself in with a Sultan battery. Assuming Barney D lands a good solo flare on the rest of Denial, that means Reason Gaming can focus down Vi, then turn their attention to the next champion. You know what? If solo flare doesn't hit, Let's use shock, uh, the Shockwave from Oriana to displace Denial and allow Reason to reposition. We'll see if it works. They, they pick the fight. They've come very far forward from that one. Trashy coming in, gonna land the Cocoon on towards Nick, but it's kickers that they want from this one. Intervention comes out, he flashes. There's the Shockwave that will hit Babunia. They tried to get away. Pizu gonna be blown up though by Babunia. And now they turn in. Spear lands onto Barney D. It was meant for Senkux, but he flashed away. And there is Kikis diving in too far. He falls down, and in the end, a two Two for one. Well, they just sidestep that cocoon. I think that's going to be the end of it, though. Two for one in favor of Denial. It is. If Denial want to stick around, they have enough health bars to siege down this turret. That was the theory that we were talking about. As the fight broke out, the solar flare was coming down from Barney D. Not 100% ideal. The shockwave from Senkux only caught Babunia. So at the end of the day, Reason Gaming attempted the theory, use your ability to, to displace your opponents, and then focus them down one by one, but it was poorly executed. They didn't hit enough members with their key ultimates, and that allowed Denial to re-engage. So this is what we're talking about. Notice as Beanzu teleports in the solar flare had only caught onto Nick. Even though Kikis is actually soloed out, uh, soloed away from the team, the intervention saves his life. That was a good use of that intervention. And similar story, Shockwave only catching one member. So the deeper Reason Gaming chase, the more damage they take. Rise is given time to deal damage. Sivir is given time to deal damage. That's the first real combat spell she's taken. And it was a cocoon that didn't have a very big uh, 
game-changing impact for, for Reason Gaming. If Reason want to pick those fights, they can't afford to miss. So, why does that leave us then? 2-1 still in turrets here. 3-3 three, three in kills now tied up on that front. And just over a thousand gold in favor of Zuvia. Pushing this top lane out. Turret, of course, is already gone. And we talked about the final standing outer turret in this game. That is down the bottom lane. Is once again being pressured by Reason Gaming's duo lane. Yeah, I think Reason really want to get that turret and then get some deep vision down. Uh, because of that last fight, Denial were able to grab themselves a dragon. It's the second of the game. Give themselves that additional gold. We noticed that, that Rod of Ages is sitting with uh, Babunia. He's got his tier that's stacking up nicely, as well as picking up that Glacial Shroud. So he's also starting to get to the point that he's a little bit scary, and we'll see if he can get away. Uh, I don't think he's going <laughs> to. Honest from this one. Actually, Cocoon did miss from him, but honestly, there's enough damage in there with that Phage with the Sheen as well now done for Beanzu. And of course, Elisa's damage just straight off the bat, those base statistics. But here we go, Denial looking to come in from the side. He's going to catch two there with a Vault Breaker. Assault and Battery comes in. There is the Solar Flare put down. The intervention onto Kikis, and in the end, they're not able to turn that into a kill. Decent save there from Bonnie D. If you notice that, the Solar Flare locking up the members of Denial in the back line. The one thing that really impressed me is just how much damage got applied to Senkux. He's only got that Athenes and Holy Grail. We'll get to that in a second. There's now reason to attempt the blue steal. They've gone in on Nick. Nick's gone far too deep on this one. Actually, will fall. It's Beansu that gets that one. Will that gonna get exhausted? But Reason Gaming decided not to go that deep. The blue buff is up for grabs here. Super A's kick is will like the three men. They're gonna try and stop this one from happening. They won't stop it from happening. That went over to Chris Lund in the air. I thought in the end, I thought it was the smite. The smite did come in, but a little bit too early. Yeah, smart, tiny bit early from Kick as we see Trashy didn't even use his in that particular engage. Reason came away with the kill and the blue buff steal. That is very important against a Nidalee. If you can control her blue buff, especially at this period of the game where extended sieges is what they're looking to accomplish, blue buff makes sure that that cannot actually happen. So, decent attempt and Reason Gaming, they had a 3,000 gold lead, they picked a bad fight, lost a dragon, that lead dissipated. Now they found objectives and opportunities to extend their gold once again. But the longer this game goes, the less uh, impactful that gold actually becomes because of the fact that you're going to have these very good scaling champions with Rise, with Nidalee, and I'm even going to say Kale. Depending on how Super Ace builds, I'd like to see some ability power, maybe something like a Twin Shadows. Uh, it has been reworked in 4.5. The, the ghosts travel out and travel back. Reduces the cooldown, gives you movement speed as well. I think it is an option that would be very good for Kale. Well, real men's ghosts never come back. Just saying. <laughs> Mine never return. They always find their target. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, wouldn't be a, a bad call possibly in this one with a team that's going to be chasing down later on in the game. And we see right now that they've pushed two men to middle. There are a lot of wards on the map right now. If we look at the bottom side, definitely in control of Reason Gaming at this stage of things. Top side is a bit of a tussle there. Both teams have a good amount of vision as we are going to see Kikis here going on towards Beansu. Babunia trying to get involved, but he will get caught up by the cocoon and Kikis has left him all alone up there. Babunia pops his ultimate. Will they be able to chase through? Flashes away into the tribal. So a counter gank from Reason Gaming. They bait Denial in and then force them away. I, I like the fact that uh, Beansu has got that Trinity Force. He was able to 1v1 Kikis and then 1v1 Babunia as well. It is the matchup that we talked about. We've seen it before in the LC Yes, and Beansu is playing it very, very well. The risk is, of course, like we've seen, the moment Beansu overextends or picks, off, picks up a fight that's a bit more intense than he was anticipating, there is not enough defensive statistics on his side to survive the burst. And Babunia had the support of Nick, so he was trying to get a little aggressive there. And again, though, no. Trashy was backing him up. Trashy was waiting just off to the side in that brush. In case anyone decided to push further out than the position that they were already in, here is Nick going to be uh, diving in to clear out that wave that was pushed up by Senkux, who has a very solid CS lead over his counterpart. Nick. Look for the cocoon at lands. Yeah, Baboon is dead. Exactly what I was talking about before we went to the mid lane there. He waits and completely his wall out here. Gonna get pressured down by the intervention coming in. They go on towards Crystal and we see there. Summon a spare heal. Walls used and there is the turnaround. Barney D gonna dive back in. Crystal and flashed away there. They're both extremely low from this one. Are they gonna get the speed in? There is the heal and that speed boost. A good call in coming back. Where's the Zenith played from Barney D? It does land in there. Wall gets exhausted. There's a heal coming back though. They could fight this one. Crystal and Barney D are so 
very, very low. I think the problem is they don't have any vision of the river. They're scared of someone coming down. And low mana pools on the side of Bullite as well. So if he wants to spam those boomerangs or ricochets, it's going to be a lot more difficult. That was the first time that I've seen that support, Kale, actually blow me away. Now in the top lane, not only did they get the kill on Babunia, the huh. red buff, I think that was, manages to secure another kill that was onto Kickers. They also was got Binzu's the tower. last blade. It's just like whew. flying through the air. I think what was great about the the bottom lane play between Woolite and Super Ace was the fact that that intervention really did save Woolite's life. He was stick, stuck right up in the front line. Chrysalin and Barney D were focusing him down. Now there was no culling available. It had been used earlier in the fight. So what Super Ace and Woolite did is they timed their aggression well to be aware that uh, Chrysalin didn't have his ultimate up. In addition, they saved it to when it's most appropriate. In order for intervention to be successful, it needs to block a large amount of damage. And we'll see if they can make it work. This time around, Dragon has been started by Reason Gaming. Nick is just trying to spam Spears. I don't think they can contest. No. And now they're re-engaging. Yeah, this is really bad news. They've locked up Babunia. Their intervention used early. Barney D is right in the middle. They're going to lose the rise, though. There's a shockwave coming up to Super Ace. Burning Zoo dives straight into the middle. Woolite popping his ultimate very late on in this one. Beanzu takes the Spear, and they try to get away from it. But now it's turned around. It's Denial that are chasing. Woolite gets one. Here comes Kiki from the side. Assault on Patreon to St. Cook. This is a massive turnaround for Denial. Trashy gonna flash away. Has he got the health to stay alive? He has, but Chrysalon might find himself falling here. Nick gonna chase through. Spear not got the range. So at the end of the day, that was a two kill secured for Reason Gaming and they chased. They carried on chasing. They chased too deep. At the end of the fight, Reason Gaming lose three members. Now what I like is the solar flare was pretty good, but it was the successful solar flare was uh, deterred by that intervention, the entire culling damage was blocked thanks to Kale's ultimate. And even though Reason Gaming look very strong here at the start, look at the split. Nick is sitting off on the sideline. He's trying to find angles for javelin tosses. And the moment everybody goes low, there's no armor or magic is really on the side of Reason Gaming. So Irelia just gets shut down and popped by Kickers with the re-engage. Assault and Battery wasn't even used in the early because Denial were backing away. They didn't want that fight. They turned. Get the kills, the tower, and the Baron. Baron taken here for Denial, and that gold not quite evening up, but that is a massive shift of things. We'll see what Denial can actually do with this one. What they're going to be picking up, Archangel Staff there, collected by Babunia. If you look down the AD carries, we see that that last Wisp added into the Bloodthirster and Static Shiv now, and we can see that nearly also well on the way to finishing off that Rabadon's death camp. So I want to step back and look at why Denial is winning these fights. Even though Reason Gaming has picked the battles, they've landed a few good ultimates, but not enough to instantly decide the outcome of the battle. And as Reason Gaming are chasing, we touched on how mobile the denial composition is. There's movement speed from Siva, from Kale, from Nidalee, from Ryze. Everybody's got movement-based abilities that work into their favor. And that the longer you chase, the more ground you cover, which means the more opportunities to turn and gain an advantage are presented to denial because of the fact that they can out-position, out-rotate, and you know, re-engage at a faster speed, Reason have to be 100% accurate with their engages, and because they've not been, it's allowed Denial those windows, thanks to their high mobility. Scary times coming up for Reason Gaming, and well, a scary four minutes at least, that's for sure, as they have to surely sit back and wait for this Baron to just time it out. If you look at Binzu there, 6-3-1, formidable position. Got himself now a Banshee's Veil and a Chain Vest. So we'll see if he goes straight in towards that Guardian Angel, possibly uh, straight away after this. Don't forget, on 4.5, Guardian Angel is now the key ingredient for the Warden's Mail into Randian's Omen, as opposed to two cloth armors. So it chain could vest. also be Chain Vest. Thank you. I don't know what I said. Guardian Angel, it Couldn't. just builds into everything yes, these God. days. The Chain Vest builds into the Warden's Mail plus 280 gold. So True. we'll see if uh, I feel like that's going to be the more likely option. That will also mitigate all the movement that Denial has. Thanks to the Baron buff, Reason no longer wants to fight. Not oh. only do they need that, but look at the opportunity. They've got an inner turret, and they're going to get some damage on the inhibitor turret. That is just super sneaky. And uh, given away, to be honest, they push straight up that top lane with four men. Kind of have to expect that. Reason really seizing an opportunity that's gifted to them on a plate, to be quite frank there. And 
That's something that Denial can't really afford to do at this stage. Super is going to get caught here in the cocoon. Intervention used on himself. Will Denial want to chase this one? Looks like they will. Kick is moving forward. There is the assault and battery. It's going to go straight through on towards Crystal. They throw it in. They've got back at Kikis. But here comes the rest of the team. The calling comes in. Babunia going to get locked up for quite a while. The spears landing left, right, and center. There's the shockwave. It's only a two man. Woolite blocked it with his spell shield. And he's going to try and chase through. In the end, Denial don't get the kills. But they've got positioning on mid. And they're going to chase it down. If Denial can put Reason Gaming underneath their own turret, the Nidalee uh, Javelin Tosses plus the Boomerang Blades make Reason Gaming's life so much more difficult. Keep in mind, Solar Flare is not up. Shockwave is not up. So Denial are going to basically win the fight thanks to great positioning and grab themselves a reply in a turret. It looks like they want to continue the siege. They've got about 30 seconds left on this Baron buff. Let's see what they can do with it. Well, they're taking a lot of damage there from St. Cooks and a little bit late on the spell shield to protect himself from that. And here we go then. Nick waiting off to the side. He's just going to be lobbing those spears in from the back. Not quite got the range this time around to find Trashy. And Kikis doing a little bit of tanking up there. Honestly, he's not tanky enough at this stage to risk going for that. Uh, but they do have a pretty much open inner turret in this top lane. The minion wave already pushed fairly far through. So this is a, this is a case. The problem that Reason are in right now is the fact that they don't have the ability to catch all of the members of Denial. When they jumped into Super A's earlier on, Super A's used his intervention, and while the intervention was there, received heals from himself and from Nidalee, and all of the damage that was put down was instantly taken away. Reason Gaming need to blow somebody up and deal damage to a couple other members with their AoE abilities in order to make this work. And if Trashy's gonna eat a Javelin Toss like that, it's basically gonna gift the tower to Denial. They cannot sit underneath this turret and tank it up for too long with all of that poke going in. And Solar Flare is Whips. not gonna be effective. It goes towards Papunia. Will they turn around and attack this one? They just wanna get them out of that turret range. There's a spear onto Bean too as well. Kikis this time does tank it up long enough for not quite the finishing damage. Okay, Woolite's well, gonna say, you know what, I'll do it then. And he finally finishes off that tower. That's 5-5 five, five now in turrets. We see that Denial brought it back to just a thousand gold lane. difference. They're just gonna rotate here surely to bottom. It's already got the minion wave there. There's nobody from Reason Gaming to get there. We'll see if Denial are going to make their way over. It does seem to be the decision right now. And you've got Dragon available. So they could have gone Tower, then Dragon. The safe option is to go Dragon and assume Reason Gaming are going to go the Tower. That's what we thought they were going to do. Instead, it looks like Reason are barreling down this middle lane. Ultimates all available on the side of Denial. So if a fight were to break out, the tools are there for Denial to make them work. And Barney D can't afford to hit a single man solo flare. He has to get multiple targets. Looks like Reason going for that positional play as well, knowing that they backed away likely towards the Dragon. By the time this minion wave actually gets here though, they're already oh. going to be spawning in. That's a big uh, spear on towards Senkux at the back. Are they going to keep throwing through on this one? They do have on the hunt available if they were so uh, inclined to use it, but decide, okay, let's not bother chasing this one through. We've got a minute till the Baron. Let's get a lot of wards in there. Let's get control of that, first of all. So what I'm getting the vibe of throughout this game is that Reason Gaming's uh, under-pressure decision-making maybe isn't 100% on point right now. There's been two very clear team fights that Reason Gaming has initiated and chased and ended up losing. One in the bottom lane, one around the Wraith Camp of the Niles Jungle. In that position where there was a tower under pressure, there was a dragon available, and very few minions in that middle lane, Reason Gaming opted to run all the way from their base to their opponent's inhibitor turrets. Yes, they did get some pretty good vision down that half of the map, at least in the entries to the middle lane, but that was it. That's all that was really gained. They didn't ward up their own jungle. They didn't ward the buffs that they could look to contest. Gold is completely even, and I prefer the scaling champions and composition of Denial in this situation because it's less reliant on hitting multiple members with multiple abilities. Reason finally pushing out their base now with that Baron buff finally worn off. Baron, which uh, you, you can't fault Denial on their decisiveness there, winning that team fight, going straight in for the Baron. A swift move from them, but here comes B2 from around the side. He does have the ball and he said he's got the shockwave available. They're actually going to throw the solar play onto Nick, but the intervention comes around and now the pushback from Denial. The Cullen going to do little to nothing. More like, wow, he was completely out of position. Spell Shield won't save him. There is the repel away. Babunia won't be able to finish off Trashy and he may even fall himself. Beanzu going to dive in there. This will be the finisher. It's Beanzu that gets the kill. That's a two for one. Only the support down for Reason. So well played by Reason to find kills and make an ability stick. 
The fact that Wulai was instantly deleted and that he had his summoner uh, heal available this tells you just how far away from his team he was. He cannot afford to get caught out like that. Reason Gaming punished by grabbing two kills in reply for one, but it doesn't lead to any objectives yet. There is a window of opportunity, but it's not the greatest. And I think if they try to go for this Baron, it is a little bit risky. Nidalee is going to poke you down from the back line, and we could see uh, uh, Kickus going in. Assault and Battery's up. So a lot of damage coming in. Turns wow. On to Super Ace. He's got the ball on his head. It's going to give him that speed boost moving in. There is the heal. Super Ace actually going to heal himself there to get away from that one. But again, they hold this position. That's all, though. Although they lost health there, they've bought time here, Denial, and stopped Reason from just rushing straight in for that Baron. Yeah, all five members of Denial are up, and because of the damage in Crystalline, this is going to be a very, very difficult objective to hold. It's one of these situations where Crystalline needs to back off. He either heals off a Wraith Camp and those double golems and comes in at sub-optimal HP, or he backs off the base and will be late to a potential Baron engage. Both of these teams feel that Baron is the next big fight or next big objective to battle over. And all of a sudden, Nick and Kickers, they're out of position. And Beans are going straight in on towards Kickers here. And actually, he's going to just run straight into the wall, forced to then flash over the top. I feel he should be fairly safe from this one, unless Beans goes completely all in on him. There's the slow back from Super Ace. Kickers will be able to walk away. We see that actually. Chrislund is recalling on the top side there, so that would leave them without the AD carry if they want to go for this Baron. Ryze does have teleport available, as does Beanzu, so they basically can counter each other out if they go down the bottom of the map. It's a really interesting setup right now because both of these teams, I think, are feeling the pressure of the major objectives, like those inhibitor turrets, like those Barons, but they haven't been able to outmaneuver their opponents. Uh, there's always been somebody who's a little too deep. You know, a, a minute or two ago, Nick or Kickers, they were running through the river. They ran so far away that all of a sudden, Binzu was now the one that was overextended because he was chasing so deep to try and make something happen. It feels like neither team has enough vision to accurately engage and outright win an engagement. And I think I'd like to see a little bit more wards determining initiation, not necessarily mispositions determining initiation. Warlight's now got his Infinity Edge added in there, which is all well and good, but if you're too far forward and you just get blown up, then it doesn't matter if you've got those four items or zero items, you're going to go down and be of no effect in the grand scheme of things. Denial, though, they have that gold lead back in their favor. Still behind on kills, still bang level on turrets. Five apiece on that front. Baron, of course, is still there. We're going to have Dragon coming up in one minute's time as well. A little bit safer of an objective for these two teams to be around. It is a little bit safer. Uh, it will still produce the same type of outcome, I feel. Both of these teams are happy to engage, and you know, Dragon's going to be dealing quite a bit of damage now. It has been adjusted uh, in 4.5. Uh, deals percentage HP damage and, and will scale with the average level as well after level 9. So it's going to hit a little more, more uh, heavier. What I'd like to see, though, is Denial trying to s put themselves in a siege position. If Denial were to go past this Baron Pit, get a couple of wards in the red buff area of Reason Gaming, they can use their Sivir and their Nidalee to keep Reason on the back foot. The risk is, of course, that if they try to perform a siege and fail uh, to position correctly, a Shockwave and a Solar Flare by those inhibitor steps are devastatingly effective. So it's, it's one of these situations where there's so much risk in any play that you do, because it can completely swing control of this game. With 37 minutes in, a uh, decisive team fight will cost an inhibitor. Trash and Beans, who are actually down in the bottom tri -bush. On denial side of the map, they're trying to set something up. In the end, it will actually be them moving in towards the Dragon. Rise needs to move into position here. Babunia currently not in an area of the map where it can help out with this Dragon, but it's already started here. Reason get it down to half HP. They're trying to spear in, but that will be picked up in the end by Trashy. They get away without taking damage. Yeah, a couple of spears get thrown up, but no real, no real attempt to steal. I think Denial, again, didn't want to uh, fall foul of, of being caught out. Both teams are playing quite safe. I think that's the best way to explain it right now. They, they're looking for opportunities in the hopes that something will present itself, but they're not trying to force anything themselves. So we'll see how they start out. Denial finally looking like the makings of a siege. I'm anticipating this is mostly just going to be a ward run, maybe. Uh, get some vision in the jungle. We'll see how long they stick around. Because like we said, the risk of being caught on these stairs is very high. Surprised that bottom turret actually lasted 
as long as he has here, the in <laughs> turret I'm talking about, because... Positioning. They, yeah. <laughs> going for that one earlier on, as we see once again. Okay, did I say we want the in turret? We're going to throw those spears through and hope that we can keep going on this one. There is one landing. Barney D loses half of his HP. Kick is stepping forward there as if to say, come on, guys, I'll tank it up, get those shots off, but still very dangerous way to play it. Yeah, so I like the fact that the spears hit Barney D. That's probably the best target. Solar Flare's gone in. He's going to go straight into the net. Kick is actually at the back that gets caught. Intervention comes in. Well, I guess the kill, though. There is Beanzu going low. The spear comes from the side as well. And this Wallite, who's absolutely destroying them right now. Chris Lund is going to go down. That will be a triple kill. Can he get number four? Yes, he can. The turret's going to go down. Quadra kill going over towards Wallite, and that's surely game. That is a fantastic play by Denial. Managing to throw down that intervention that kept Kickers alive long enough to make Reason overcommit. They chased beyond the borders of their steps. Nick was hanging around on the tree line, landing spear after spear, and that was a very well executed team fight from Denial. I do feel that Reason overextended, but game one goes to Denial. Denial picking up game number one, and I think a lot of people said that Denial were the stronger team coming into this one, but Reason looked a lot more impressive. We have to see, we have to talk about though the fact that was it comp reliant, the fact that they had such a strong earlier game and as Denial ramped up, they did get stronger and inevitably came back? I do think that is, is what it, a large portion of what it boils down to. At the end of the day, Reason Gaming had the first gank, they got the first blood. They had some very good aggressive positional moves across the map, but it never accounted to anything more than two or 3,000 gold. And every time they had a lead, Reason Gaming are the ones responsible for losing the lead. They picked bad team fights, they overextended and chased, and then when they did that, they lost everything that they'd already built up. Had those two team fights not happened, you could theorize that they would have had a six or a 7,000 gold lead, because if they had continued to accrue smaller advantages at lower risk, they may never have lost that uh, dominant lead that they already had. Same time, though, I think you have to give credit to Denial. The turnaround moment where they got the kills and went straight to Baron. We didn't see the Baron even because we were watching the fight yeah. again. That's how decisive they pulled that off. Just as a very quick one, for Denial, they had a comp that needed time. They needed to wait. They needed to get items before they were powerful enough. And they, they wanted to re-engage. They have mobility. They have tools to get through the front line, get to the back line, and reposition. And I think... The moment Reason Gaming overextended, they were like, oh, hang on a minute. If we move this way, move that way, we can make this work for us. And they did. So their under-pressure decision-making was great, and they played from behind, which is not something a lot of teams can do. Well, guys, we are one step closer to determining the last team to compete in the LCS promotion tournament. We need to take a quick break, but when we come back, it's game two between Reason Gaming and Denial Esports. Plus, CLG's Jungler Dexter will join us to break down the season.